Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial on the introduction to scripting in Roblox Lua. Today we'll be talking about tables and arrays, which arrays are technically a form of table and it's actually not an array, it's a pseudo array. And I'm saying this because any of you who know what an array is or in the table, you're probably freaking out at me right now. For those of you who don't know, I'll explain. Let's first look at a real life table. On a real life table you have your well table and hold on I, I want to pull up a program so I can illustrate this better. So you've got a table you can have corn, salad, water, ham all on top of your pitifully drawn table. When you ask somebody to pass you say the corn and you're sitting here somebody's sitting here you ask them to pass you the corn they know that you don't want the salad they know that you don't want the ham they know that you want what's called corn and it's on the table so they take what's on the table and named corn and they hand it down to you somebody asks for the ham well you're not picking up a whole ham so you're just gonna cut off some parts and something but anyway you pass the ham to the person that's over here. You pass it here, they, here, here. It, well, that's not relevant. Anyway, somebody asks for ham, you're next to the ham, you give them the ham. Why? Well, because you're at the, you know that they're asking for something that's on the table, and you know that they're asking for something called ham. Well, there's only one thing on the table called ham, so you give them the ham. Hopefully that illustration, despite its terrible drawing capabilities there, uh, hopefully it makes some sense as I move on to showing you guys this in the scripting world. So let's go ahead and create local table. And we can't call it table because that's a keyword. So we're going to call it table like that because proper spelling is not very important. Well, yeah. So how do you create a table in Roblox Lua? Well, I'll tell you, it looks a lot better than my table in paint.net you just put two curly braces so here's one curly brace and let me blow this text up a bit so you can really see those curly braces we've got one curly brace then we've got a second curly brace and they're just like there and they indicate the beginning the beginning and the end of your first creation of the table now if we have nothing in between these it just creates an empty table so imagine this and we're like boom okay there's nothing here and with a table, let me go ahead and redraw all of those things because, yeah. Okay, so with a table in Lua, you can actually start with a table that has stuff on it. So let's go ahead and create corn, okay? So how do you name something and put it into a table? That's the next question. To n put something into a table, first you have to name it and we're going to name our first thing corn and then we're going to set corn equal to eight <laughs> okay I don't know why corn is a number but in the world of Roblox Lua right now it, it's a number go with it so we have corn right and it's set to some value it can be any value in the entire world of Lua so eight doesn't really matter but here's how it works we named it with a string we already discussed strings they're like characters right if you don't know what a string is go back to the categories page uh, introduction to scripting I think it's like my third or fourth episode is strings so we named it a string and but why do we have these like brackets here well because with a table you this isn't really called a name and it's not called a variable either it is a variable you can actually change this value here as much as you want but it's not called a variable it's called a table value this is a table value and this is called its index okay so index just means sort of the name but the reason it's called index is because typically these are numbers and in like libraries 
like real libraries where you get books, um, they'll index things by their like whatever number category system thing. They'll index them that way. It's called an index, okay? So this is the name. And in Lua, you can index something with any type of object. We've done it with a string. You could do it with a Boolean. You could do it with another number, which is the important one that we'll be getting to very, very soon. You can do it with a number. Uh, you can do it with, uh, there's not really any other types of objects we really know about right now. So let's just keep it there. Anyway, you could do it with any type of object. Any type of object we ever discuss in any of these Roblox Lua or any other type of Lua tutorials, it will work. You can use it, okay? But for now, we're going to keep it called corn, okay? So we have corn. Now, how do you start a table with multiple items, multiple values? Well, you separate them with a comma. And then you can make another one. So let's go ahead and make our salad. And that was a lot bigger, so we're going to make that equal to like four, six, no, 14. I prefer 14 because it's not double. So we've got corn is equal to 8, and now we've got our salad is equal to 14. But how does Lua know when the value ends? Well, we put a comma after we're done with this. And then Lua knows, okay, there's another value coming up after this comma. And again, it follows the same naming convention, salad 14. And actually, I want to change these to strings. This is the corn and oops, I am the all-powerful salad, okay? Because it's just going to be easy to see when we print these to output, which is what we're about to do. So how do we use these values outside of the table is the next question. Well, let's just do it with our typical print. So we know we can print a variable, but how do we print a value within a table? Well, we first use the table name, which in this case is misspelled table, T-A-B-E-L. And then we put a bracket. We put the value, the index of whatever we're trying to get, which in this case is corn, okay? And then another bracket table bracket value closing bracket done that's how we do it we put the name of the table or the name of the variable of the table would be more accurate and we put a bracket the index and the closing bracket and that gets the value another way though which is special only for strings that don't have spaces. Keep in mind, this only works for strings that don't have spaces. And actually, I think it only works with strings that follow the naming rule, like that follow the rules that you can name variables. So it has to have a name or a string index um, that could have been used as a variable name. We can just do table dot salad because it's a string and it follows all the rules of naming something naming a variable this is a legal variable name we could do table and instead of using the bracket and the quotation marks we could just do dot the name and I'll prove that to you right now test run here we see this is corn and I am the all-powerful salad it printed them both correctly because we indexed them both correctly. Granted, we indexed them both radically different. One of them is indexed using the brackets and the quotation mark and blah, and the other is done with just a period, but they both work. Keep in mind, the period one, though, only works for strings that follow the naming rules of variables. So, now how would you add a variable, well not add a variable, change the value of a value, change the value of a value within a table. So how, you, how would you index something and change it? Well let's go ahead and change corn. Let's go to table um, dot corn, yes you can do it this way, table dot corn, 
And le actually, let's print table corn before we do this. Okay. So we print the corn and then we're going to print it again. Table.corn equals I am more powerful than the salad. Okay. So all you have to do, you have to index it, which could have worked this way, or it could have worked this way. You can do for strings that follow all the rules, you could do the dot, or you could do this, the normal indexing pattern and then you just set the value like a normal variable and we're going to test by running this and we see this is corn this is the corn I am more powerful than the salad and I am the all-powerful salad but the last one's not nearly as important because the first value was this is the corn and it printed that and then we changed the value and then we printed it again and we got the new value printed out, which is I am more powerful than the salad, which is obviously not true because the very next thing is I am the all-powerful salad. But needless to say, it worked. It changed the value. That is how you change the value of something within a table. How do you add something, though, to a table? Hmm? Here's how. After you've created the table, after the, there's already a table there, you can add something to the table, like come up with its index as well by going table, and then you have to, you can't do dot, well, you can, but anyway, table bracket, put the index, in this case we're going to put ham, and then equal sign, and you can just do I am ham eat me okay so you can do that and we're going to now print ham and we're going to take out this line and this line okay so we have and let's comment let's comment these two lines out because we just want to print the ham eh nah why not keep them around we like corn and salad vegetables yay um so we've got table ham equals I am ham eat me. That creates a new value within a table. And actually it doesn't create a new value. And I'm going to prove that. We have corn salad ham. But what else did we have on our table? We had water. We've got corn and salad. We've got ham. We need water. So let's go ahead and print water as well. Print table table that water we see we've only made corn salad and ham we don't have any water on the table but watch what happens so we have I am ham eat me so there we go we proved that it worked to set a new value for a new index in the table we set ham equal to I am ham eat me after we had already created the table we proved that works We've got this nil thing that I'll explain in a second. And then we've still got this is corn and I am the all-powerful salad. So we see that when we set a new value within our table, it doesn't actually break anything else. Nothing else gets hurt. Um, but nil, this is when we printed water, table.water. Why did we get nil? <clears throat> we got nil because nil is kind of the value for no value in Lua. In Lua, nil means there's nothing here not even zero zero is a value it means nothing but at the same time it tells you in a numerical fashion okay and in computers numbers including zero they are stored using bits so it, it zero still involves eight zeros in the computer okay nil doesn't nil has no value at all there is nothing in the computer being taken up by nil. There are no bits in the computer being used by nil. So nil just means absolutely, positively, there is nothing here that you could ever, ever find because it doesn't exist. Okay? But it didn't break. That's the key. Even though, and I'm going to stop this test, even though water is never defined anywhere in a table whenever you index something if it doesn't exist it's not going to break it's just going to tell you it doesn't exist by giving you nil 
nil is returned when something doesn't exist. So that's why table.water still worked. Okay. We see that we can set values within our first declaration of the table, or first time we create the table. We see that we can create values after the table. We saw earlier that we can do table that corn equals um, I am more powerful than salad or something like that and that worked and we also see as I'm going to separate this from the others we also see that you can print or use the value of something that was never actually specifically created in a table it won't break it'll just be nil so it means there is no value to this, but I'm just going to let you know that instead of breaking your entire script over this tiny little problem, you go ahead and deal with the nil. I'm just going to give it to you, okay? That's what the table does. It's like, I don't want to hurt you, but I'm going to let you know. So here you go. Here's nil. Do what you want, okay? So that's what this does. So we know how to create a table now, and we know that a table is just something with a whole bunch of stuff on it. Okay, we can put any number of things in it. We can name them anything we want. They don't have to be named strings. They can be named numbers and booleans and any other type of value we could possibly ever come up with. And it works. And we know that for strings that follow the proper naming conventions of variables, we can even do it this way, table dot corn. Okay? And you can name your table anything. I just named it table like that because, yeah. You can't name it actually table, like, spelled correctly because it's a keyword in Lua. And that's why we misspelled it. But, yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys learned quite a bit about tables today. I hope it made you hungry or thirsty. But, I mean, the water didn't exist. So, you might need to fix that because without water, you're not going to last long. But, anyway, I hope you guys learned quite a bit from this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys next time.